So welcome to a webinar on one-on-one -on -one iPad usage and applications in K through 12 classrooms. This is part of our series for the e-learning innovations virtual conference. My name is Dr. Penina Lam and I am the facilitator for this session and I am with e-learning innovators um, Inc and as well as being the conference co-director. I'm pleased to introduce today uh, our two speakers for this webinar, Dr. Fan Yu Lin, who is an associate professor in the Department of Education at Robert Morris University in Western Pennsylvania in the United States. Her research interests includes behavior analysis, pre-service teacher training, and application of technology in education. Uh, her co-facilitator is Julia Bennett. Julia is a teacher. She teaches math at the Beaver Area School District in Western Pennsylvania. She's in her second year of the Instructional Management and Leadership Doctoral Degree Program at Robert Morris University. So Julia's research interests include one-on-one, one-to-one -on -one, one -one mobile classrooms, note-taking in mathematics, and note-taking materials and strategies for 21st century learners. So these are great uh, experts to have, and they'll talk to us about the experiences using the uh, iPad within the K-12 classrooms. With uh, our audience of educators, I believe we'll, we'll have a wonderful opportunity to learn from the experiences that we can adapt in our own classrooms. Without further ado, I would let um, Dr. Fan Yulin and Julia Bennett give us the presentation. And again, welcome to the webinar. So we'll, I'll be passing on the mic now to Dr. Fan Lin and, uh, and Julia to get, to get us started. So it's all yours, uh, Julia. Hello, everybody. Um, this is Fan Yu here, and um, Julia is with me. Um, before we actually started our topic, I have a small story to share with you. Um, recently in class, I observed a rather interesting thing. This is an uh, undergraduate teaching training course. In class, I asked my students to do a jigsaw discussion while the student must master their assigned content in their expert group so that they may share the information later with their whole group members. I was pretty sure I would remind them to bring their textbook. Our first day of class in a blackboard, our um, course management people. Do they remember? Not really. After a shot, one of my students said, wait, I have a book. She took out her phone and started flipping the pages to the required chapters. The whole discussion was back to the track without any interruption. It was quite amazing to me. While I was aware of the availability of mobile learning, I wasn't fully really aware of their possibilities in face-to-face -face classroom. With our intentionally design, there has to become a mobile learning environment through the effort and initiation from my students alone. It made me wondering how much more teachers can do if we can take advantage of the technology in lesson planning and delivery. Um, technology opens a whole new world to all of us. It enabled us to assess more information in last time with less effort. It also allowed us to build relationships with individuals who otherwise would have no connections with us whatsoever. Nevertheless, Julia and I are here today, virtually, sharing our stories with you, people around the globe, all because of technology. As the name suggested, mobile learning is a learning on the moon, using just a small device, either a phone, a tablet, a tech, uh, laptop, or in our case, an iPad. Um, individuals can access learning anywhere at any time. Accessibility is by all means the most critical feature of mobile learning. Unlike some other typical standardized learning material, mobile learning can easily be delivered on an individual basis. It is no longer necessary to target a whole class with a cookie cutter set of instruction. Our 21st century learners have had a whole new set of digital age experiences in using technology. The Information Society for Technology Education Standards encourage teachers to use technology to facilitate and inspire students in their learning based on their individual needs and interests. Through the operation of technology, students are no longer just sitting and listening to the lecture, which I often referring to um, as studenting. It's quite different from studying um, because they must take the actions to engage 
engage in the course materials, students will have more ownership of their learning when they are encouraged to actively participate in searching, creating, receiving, and connecting with the world. Through the mass production, we now see iPad closely embedded in everyone's life. It is, uh, it is light enough to carry around and quite affordable for individuals with various budgets. Like or not, this technology device already plays a critical role in students' life. So why don't we use it to expand their learning? Um, Julia will show you some of the very practical ideas to use iPad in K-12 classrooms. There are certain iPad benefits that are geared specifically toward K-12 classrooms. Number one, teachers can organize all class materials for ease of teacher and student usage. Teachers are now able to provide immediate assessment and feedback to students directly on their device. The iPad also promotes the ability of flipping the classroom and it promotes student ownership and choice. This presentation will be broken into two separate sections. The first section will focus on the ways that teachers should use their iPads in the classroom, along with the corresponding applications that should be downloaded. And the second portion will focus on the ways that students can use their iPads and which applications they can download and use for personal and educational learning. Beginning with the teacher applications, I will cover various applications that can be used for organizing class materials, flipping a classroom, or tracking student progress. Beginning with the organization of classroom materials, my school district, the Beaver Area School District, focuses on the use of iTunes University. Now iTunes University does have a public domain in which anybody can enter courses. But as a teacher, you can create and make your own courses private for your students and your school district. To use iTunes University, you are able to create multiple unique courses that will be shown under the My Courses tab. This is a screenshot of the four courses that I have created for my students and use on a day-to-day -day basis with them. The first step to get started with iTunes University is to begin an outline of the course. Prior to entering any course materials for your students to view, you need to create the outline. Each section of the outline is known as a post. If you look at the screen, this is an outline of my Algebra 1 course. I outline this course according to chapters, whereas some of the English teachers in my school district outline iTunes University in units, by weeks, or according to the content that they are learning. Once you have your outline and you enter a few materials, you can share your course code found in the admin section with your students. There are various ways to show this code. You can type it on your course syllabus, email it home to parents, or have it projected on your bulletin board. At the beginning of this school year, I included this course code in the middle school handbook that was given to every family. I also posted on my bulletin board and have this hanging in my classroom so that students can continuously enter throughout the school year. The next step for iTunes University is to provide links and codes to all of the other required applications that a teacher may use in their class. This is an excellent way to use iTunes University because you can directly link the application within your course and we'll, this will save time for students. They don't have to go to the App Store, download the application from there. They can easily click on the icon from your course. In addition, you can see what is circled are the course codes that my students use for my Shobi course. And lastly, most importantly, if you are choosing to use iTunes University in the classroom to share your materials with your students, you need to make sure that you continuously upload the course materials for student access. This will let them know that this is an excellent tool where they have unlimited access to all of your course materials. In addition, I have a post known as the weekly agenda, and every Sunday evening I post the objectives, the lesson and the homework that the students will learn throughout the week. This is a great way to help them stay organized and learn responsibility. Moving on to the next way that teachers can use the iPads in the classroom 
is the flipped classroom approach. Now, you can download Edu Creations, Keynote, or the Nearpod application to create presentations with voiceover that your students can view at home. But the application that I will focus on is Edpuzzle. Now, to create an Edpuzzle account, teachers need to go to the actual URL, edpuzzle.com, and create a teacher account. The students will need to download the Edpuzzle application on their iPad. The next step is to import either YouTube, SchoolTube, or unique videos that you make yourself through Edu Creations, Keynote, or Nearpod. The great thing about Edpuzzle is you can embed your videos with questions or comments throughout. This is what's different between Edpuzzle and the other three applications mentioned before. Whenever a question pops up for a student to answer, the video will automatically pause and the students cannot continue until they answer that question. This is another excellent way to track student progress throughout. Through your teacher account, you are able to log on, click on the class, and view each student's progress and answers to their questions. The next teacher usage that I will talk about is how to track student progress. And this can be done through the Socrative applications. The teacher will download the Socrative teacher application, and the students download the student Socrative application. And another one is Shobi that I will share toward the end of this presentation. This is a screenshot of the Socrative teacher application from my personal teaching iPad. And the first step when using Socrative Teacher is to sign in to access your room ID number. This ID number is circled at the top of the slide and can be shown to the students. That way they can enter and take the quiz. Socrative is an excellent application in which you can create your own quizzes directly through the application, import a pre-existing quiz, view all previous quizzes that you've done, and most importantly, you can access all of the student data that you collect through this application. Socrative teacher and student are similar to the classroom clickers that used to be used, but now this application allows the students to work through at their own pace and you can set it up so that students receive immediate feedback. The next step for Socrative teacher is to create your quiz. As you can see, you can create multiple choice questions, true or false, or have students type in a short answer question. After you have your quiz, it is now time to assess the students. In order to do this, the students must enter the test and begin. There are different ways that you can use Socrative Teacher. The first one is to use a quiz that was previously discussed. The second way is to provide only one question to the students. This can be multiple choice, true and false, or short answer. If you want the students to compete in teams, you can choose the space race option, or if you pr would prefer to do an exit ticket and post the question elsewhere in your classroom, you can use the exit ticket option. And finally, after the students exit out of the Socrative student application, you are able to view all of the reports. You can review them live as the students are answering, or you can have them emailed directly to you in an Excel file or a PDF document. Moving forward, the second part of this presentation will focus on the student applications and the way that students should use iPads in the classroom. Beginning with electronic note-taking, there are four very popular applications that have been mentioned through the research and that I've seen personally used in an educational setting. Notability will be the application that I specifically focus on because with this application, students can create their own unique notes using various tools. Paperboard notes and Neo Annotate plus PDF 
are applications in which students can download an existing PDF and write directly on them. Notability and Evernote are applications in which students can create their own notes. The way that students can use Notability is to organize according to a divider and subjects. So for example, on the slide, the divider that I chose to use was the 2015-2016 school year. If you would click on that part of the screen, what would drop down are all the subjects that I have. Algebra 1 notes, pre-algebra notes, and math count notes. Within each one of these subjects, students can add as many notes as necessary according to what they're taking in class. The excellent thing about Notability that is different from other applications is the student's ability to export these notes elsewhere. Students can email these notes directly to the teacher, a friend, or themselves. They can upload them for permanent storage to their Dropbox or Google Drive. They may print them if they prefer to make a binder of their typed notes, or they can also airdrop these notes to another student. And this has been very popular in my classroom. If a student is absent one day, it is their responsibility to catch up on their missed notes. Through airdrop, they can pick a very valuable, organized friend who takes color-coded notes to share their notes with them. And that's one of the main reasons why we choose to use Notability. There are many features aside from this. Students can handwrite, they can type, they can copy and paste, they can actually embed URLs or hyperlinks to websites, along with importing graphics, images, and using an audio option. Well, with teacher permission, they can record the lesson to go back in here later. The next way that students can use iPads is to showcase creativity. Once again, EduCreations and Keynote are excellent applications that students can use to create interactive presentations. If students choose to use the Numbers application, this is excellent to make graphics such as pie charts, bar, um, bar graphs, or they can make histograms as well. And finally, iMovie is a very popular application in which students create unique videos instead of the typical slide presentation. iMovie is a way for students to import pre-recorded videos that they have on their iPad. They can stream various videos together while trimming them and Xing out any bloopers. They can upload graphics and background music directly from their iPad. And they can also adjust their speed. They can do a normal speed, they can speed up their video, or even slow it down to emphasize a very specific part of the presentation. And finally, students can share their video by submitting it electronically or emailing it directly to the teacher. And lastly, Shobi is a very important and popular application in my school district for both teacher and student usage. The way that students use Shobi is to submit their work electronically for the teacher. And if the teacher has the Shobi Pro app, they can directly grade on this application. So the first step for teachers is to create a class. By clicking on the top wrench and then the plus sign next to new class, teachers can add as many as necessary. What students will do is click the wrench at the top of the screen and then join the class. The next step for teachers is to choose the course that they have and then create an assignment. Teachers are able to name the assignment whenever they please. They can assign a due date along with a due date time and they can lock the assignment so that it is invisible to students until they are ready to open it up. The students will be notified if they submit an assignment past the due date. What the teachers will see is a little red paper clip signifying that the students submitted their assignment late. And the next step for the students, once their teacher has assigned a specific assignment, is to submit that assignment. The students will go into their Shobi account, select the course, click on their assignment, and upload. Now they can upload both PDFs, notes directly from Notability, and they can upload presentations or videos as well. 
The last thing that we would like to share with you are a few cautions and concerns along with corresponding solutions that we have found through the research. Mangan Wardley in 2012 came up with the majority of these cautions and concerns, but through individual experience with one-to-one -one classrooms and reading through the research, this table provides an excellent list of solutions that you can use when tackling a one-to-one -one classroom. At this point, we would like to thank you for viewing our presentation. If you have any questions regarding the information that we shared today, you can contact us using the email addresses that we provided on the first slide. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, I'll take it back uh, from you, uh, Dr. Fan and Julia. Thank you for a great presentation. Okay. And I would encourage our listeners and participants who are going to be viewing your video to kindly uh, to feel free to contact our speakers. And um, again, we thank you for your interest in this particular webinar on how one can use iPad in within K through 12 classrooms. And as you know, this uh, particular applications actually that they were sharing uh, can be used across all levels of education and training. And so I would encourage you to try some of, some of what uh, Dr. Fan and Julia have shared with us in this webinar. And if, should you have particular questions or would you, if you'd like to interact with the presenters, uh, do not hesitate to contact them. Once again, Thank you very much, Dr. Lynn and uh, Ms. Bennett, and we look forward to interacting in another session soon. Thank you.